Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are here with Dean Sarah Drummond. How are you today? Just fine, thank you. Good. Can you tell me about how you got started with campus ministry? I'd be happy to, Ella. When I was in college, I had a real faith transformation. I had grown up in the United Church of Christ, went to Sunday school, had been confirmed, but I drifted from church as I got more involved in my school and sports. So it really wasn't until I went to college that I discovered faith for myself, mm -hmm. which I now know is a really normal faith development pattern where we get to young adulthood and decide that the faith of our childhood just isn't adequate for us in our adult decision making. Mm -hmm. I went to church on campus really as a way of trying to find some grounding and some sense of home and was swept up into the life of campus ministry and have never really left. Do you have any advice for someone who wants to get involved with campus ministry? First, the aspiring campus minister has to be grounded in his or her own faith. In my case, as a Christian minister, that meant knowing my Bible and knowing theology. Mm -hmm. Young people see through it when their campus minister is unsure of their faith perspective. Second, campus ministers need, need to be prepared in the area of pastoral care. Young adult living is tumultuous, emotional, and a campus minister who can meet the young adult where he or she is during a crisis is the only campus minister who can be effective mm -hmm. because crises happen in young adulthood so often. <laughs> uh, third, campus ministers need to be entrepreneurs. They need to have strong leadership skills and even strong community organizing skills. The institutions that employ campus ministers are not ones that right now have a strong and clear infrastructure for this pluralistic multi-faith world. Campus ministers need to be prepared to create that infrastructure and to get supporters on board with what they're trying to do. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got started working with youth ministry? I began working with youth ministry while I was actually teaching uh, middle school mathematics in Boston. Uh, with working with young people in that capacity, and concurrently entering the ministry at my home church. My pastor thought it would be a, um, a transition that would utilize my gifts and talents and be one that would really support the young people. And so those different dynamics make for a, a very challenging um, role. And so really, really a person who wants to do this type of work to really search within to see if, they're, if it's their call mm -hmm. and if they really have the patience uh, for this type of work. We are here with Dr. Bob Pasmino. Thank you very much for being here. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got started working with youth ministry? Well, some of that would have to go back to uh, my college years. I was very active in campus ministry with InterVarsity um, Christian Fellowship. But after I graduated from college, I worked um, middle school students at a local church in, in um, the Bronx. And then folks from my wife's home church in East Harlem called me to teach youth there and to work with the youth group. What have been some of your favorite experiences? I'd have to say one, I still remember distinctly, um, Louis and Danny Cortez. Louis in particular, the older brother, would come into youth group with his arms clenched. And, and, and the message, the implicit message was, you're not going to teach me anything. And now he and his brother are active on the national scale. Um, Louis is, is the president of uh, Esperanza, which means hope in Spanish ministries, and has organized uh, the annual National um, Hispanic Prayer Breakfast and Conference. And uh, here's a picture of Louis with President Obama. Wow. So on a regular basis, he's had a chance to make a difference in the lives of communities. From his clenched arms, I mean, I've seen him uh, be involved, in, and having mentored him, it's been exciting to see. So what's special about Andover Newton and youth ministry? I think in, in some ways it's possible, I know in my Christian education courses, to integrate a youth interest throughout and periodically have courses specializing in youth ministry. We hope um, next year to have a course with Tony Jones, who's a key leader nationally on the emerging church movement, and uh, exploring what's postmodern youth ministry about. 
The other opportunity, I think, is to study across the BTI, the Boston Theological Institute, because there are a number of specialized courses uh, interacting in other campus settings. The other strength I would mention, and how, this is how Andover Newton, I think, is different from other schools, is the strength of the community life mm -hmm. that's present here at Andover Newton. Uh, our history describes us as a school of the church. So there are numerous opportunities for students to get involved with church ministries. The strength of our community life makes a difference, and that's in fact where youth hunger. They hunger for genuine relationships with adults and also for the strength of a faith community. So I think that's lived out in our time here at the campus. advice for someone who might be interested in getting involved with youth ministry? Sure, let's see. Um, well, take courses. We have several courses here that are interesting that talk about developmental stages, that talk about um, different ways of learning and knowing, um, especially geared toward children and youth. Mm -hmm. So you can learn, um, some people are kinesthetic learners, so they need to move around. Some people are auditory learners, so they want to sit and listen and talk. Um, that stuff has been absolutely invaluable to me because Otherwise, I think that I would be very, um, like, I'll stand at the front and talk, and then mm -hmm. I'd wonder why they weren't interested. Well, it turns <laughs> out there are all these different ways to learn. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great New Year's Eve lock-in this year. Um, at the stroke of midnight, we watched the ball drop on a big screen mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the church, and we toasted with uh, non-alcoholic champagne. Of course. And then a spontaneous dance party broke out. <laughs> um, the music was on, and the kids just started dancing, and we just danced and danced and danced, and it was just so much fun. Good. It was just great. We have a great time. The good thing about youth ministry is you're not sort of stuck with the strictures that you are with yeah. regular ministry. Yeah. So we go to the indoor rock climbing park yeah. and we go kayaking and we talk about God and nature and we do a lot of wacky, fun things that, um, you know, maybe you wouldn't do if you weren't working with youth. Mm -hmm. What would you say makes Andover Newton distinctive in terms of the way that students get involved with youth ministry? Mm. I think our training is so practical here. Um, we definitely have a lot of theoretical learning, but it's always, uh, everything in every class I've taken here has come back to how will this work in real life? Mm -hmm. How does this work when you're on the street talking to someone? How does this work when you're at a social service agency? How does this work when you're in youth group or in the congregation? Um, so everything comes back to a practical level. It's very vocationally based training. Mm -hmm. And that's why I chose Andover Newton as, uh, as instead of the other schools I was looking at. Mm -hmm.